Welcome to the Schrader's Farm where we teach people about agriculture in a fun and somewhat entertaining way. Today we are gonna go take a tour of the meat shop. If you're new around here you probably don't know what the meat shop is. We've never told you about it. So basically our farm has a USDA inspected meat shop that we started in 2012. We are gonna go take a tour of that place and I'll show you guys what it takes to bring meat from the farm to your guys' table. There's the sign. The cow on the sign of the meat shop is a cow that we used to have back in the day when we started the place. Her name was Ruby and she was like a short horn Hereford cross. She was the best mother cow that we had. So there's Ruby. So this is the building. This part of the building behind me is the main processing building. And then the one over there is the smoke shop. This building was built in 2012. That part was built in 2013 or 14. We weren't open that long before we built that side. This is the front yard. As you can see, there's lots of space for parking for anyone who comes in here. Even if you wanted to stop by with a huge semi truck, you just swing in the driveway, make a loop, boom, you're good to go. All right, this is the front door. There's the store. This is my sister, Kara. Kara is the boss around here. She built this place with her own two hands and she continues to run it and people around and she's gonna finish the rest of the tour because if I did it, it would be terrible. First, we're gonna start with a tour of this place and then we're gonna ask you some questions about how many fingers you still have. She has nine and a half fingers left. This is where the USDA inspector sits and does nothing. Here every day. Is here every day. Yeah, everything has to be done under USDA inspection. Which means they have to see every animal inspect for glands, organs of every animal to make sure it is safe. Our USDA stamp is actually locked in the office, so we can't use it. Here. These are the two knock boxes that we use on kill days for.
customer has their own cut sheet for how they want it done. And I, I do that, or we do that. My team does that part, and Abby and Tracy wrap it and make us look good. This is the wrapping room. Abby puts everything in um, bags, labels it, and the vacuum sealer here sucks all the air out. This put boxes labeled and filled. This room would that. be more interesting to see if Abby was actually in it. We do raw product out there. If it's going to get smoked, it comes in just here. It's just brine cooler. Okay. Everything in here is in process. Yeah, there's some hams grinding in there. There's bacon's grinding in there. More bacon. It's a vacuum tumbler, so the bacon, ham, whatever goes in here with brine, and then the vacuum like sucks it into the meat. That speeds up the brine process. This is the process here for the smoke sides where they form all the rocks, they mix sausages, they mix brine, hams, bacon, all the good stuff happens out here. It's 34 degrees in here. It's so cold in here because when you're putting meat through these different things, the grinder, the meat bag, the mixer, doing all that stuff adds temperature to it. So the room is kept really cold so the meat's temperature doesn't rise because you want that almost icy feeling in the meat when you're making stuff. When they make bacons, anything really gets racked on these, these are smoke trucks. And put in the smoker, which is this big toss over here. We can do 500 pounds of bacon. We can do a lot of stuff at one time in here. process we follow appendix A for uh, cooking which is the different lethality the temperature it has to meet to um, for lethality to control E. coli and um, everything else the stereo all that stuff controlled in the smoker and it comes out here and goes in the cooler here and this cooler is somewhere around 28 degrees because everything that comes out of the smoker is coming out hot so like hams are coming out of the smoker at 145 degrees in order to cool it safely, it has to get from 130 degrees to 80 degrees in five hours because that span of time is a very high window for um, what they call C. perfringens, bacterial growth, harmful bacterial growth. So we have five hours to get from 130 to 80, and then we have 10 hours to get from 80 to 45. The smaller stuff, hot dogs, brats, whatever, never has a problem reaching that. It's hams, this is the trouble because they're so big, but this cooler can do it. It's called a blast cooler. But we have to, for USDA, we print every smoke schedule, and every, we have a data logger in there that's recording the cooling time. So every every product that gets smoked has a smoke schedule and a cooling log that I file, that if the USDA if the inspector was like, hey, let me see that, I could just be like, here it is. It met lethality, it cooled down fine, it's safe to the, really the last room in the tour unless you want to see the incredibly full freezer that we have currently. This is where they process all of the smoke stuff. This giant thing is a bacon slicer. It's pretty cool. Bacon goes in here and there's a big blade that comes around this way and spits it back out. This is a smoke truck of bacons. I've organized the bacons and hams together by customer. Um, when they come out of the smoker, everything is tagged by the customer so that we know what it is. This stuff coming out of the ham is just fat and the inner stuff that just comes off. There's nothing wrong with it. We have to test for listeria every month in the back here and also, in my room, I do E. coli six times a year, and uh, Steck six times a year, and E. coli 157H7 six times a year. Is there any higher levels of like cleanliness? For a very small meat plant, we're doing above what they say we have to. And we've never had a positive result, so it's working. My main problem right now is since COVID hit, we've been so busy and trying to keep up with everything that this is what my freezer looks like currently. 
it's over full of people that are waiting to get finished and are finished and need to come. All of the local meat shops are facing at this point just being so full because grocery stores didn't have any and we did. So what sorts of products do we sell? Uh, we have beef and pork, raw products, in that case there's hams, bacons, brats, kibbatzes, deli meat, turkey. The bacon is award winning, side note. Pepperoni, salami, silver side of snack sticks, jerky. Alright, so there you have it. That's how we take the animals from our farm and turn them into meat for your for your freezer. There's a, uh, and there's a lot of cleanliness standards and all sorts of different complicated things. That is Schrader Farms Meat Market. Thanks for watching and stay hungry. What are some of your biggest obstacles? Oh my gosh, you should have given me these questions ahead of time. Workers' comp insurance, that's a crazy expense right now. We've got a really good team right now of workers, but it has been hard to find help in the past. This kind of work isn't for everybody, and it's pretty physically challenging. So my 2000, my 2021 schedule was set back in June of 2020. That's where we're at. And how many families does the meat shop support? 12 to 13. The biggest thing that I've been thinking about lately is the United States doesn't require vendors to put country of origin on the labels anymore and there are some new things coming in like South America that if they don't have the same kind of you know controls in place like what we have to go through that stuff's going to come into the country you're not going to know that you're eating it because it's not required where you go to local a you're supporting a local farm you're supporting a local family you're putting the money back in your community um, but you also know where it comes from you know that we work really hard to make it safe and make it clean and make it good. So it's healthier, it benefits your community, 